You're listening to Three Kitchens Podcast, hosted by Aaron Walker and Heather Dyer. We're friends trying out recipes in our own regular home kitchens. We hope our experiences will inspire you to get creative in the kitchen. Jump on! My podcast idea Pinterest board be overflowing <laughs> right now. Yes. Okay, so welcome uh, everyone to Three Kitchens Podcast. We are your hosts. I am Heather here with Aaron. Hello, hello. And I just texted Aaron to say, can I get some apples from your apple tree? Because yes, it's the season as we're recording. It's the season for apples. And if the thing is, if you don't pick them and use them in some <clears throat> way, they fall to the ground, they rot, they go to waste. They attract all the things that buzz and sting and... Yeah, you want to get rid of them, use them up or get rid of them before the wasps, like, get ya. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. I had a wasp fly in my window as I was driving to pick up the kids from school today. Oh. And it was caught in my hoodie in behind my hair, like in, in my hood. And I was just like, okay, I hope it stays down there. And it did oh. until we got home and I kind of forgot about it again. And then I fluffed my hood up and it oh. came. Oh no. Yeah, but Ooh, I that... don't worry, I, I got him. That was lucky. I, I also got bit by a wasp on holidays. It crawled up my pant leg and got me oh. on the knee. Ouch. I'm telling you, me and the buzzers, we're, we're not getting along this the year. Buzzers. <laughs> Those buzzy buzzer critters stingy things oh yeah. so people often gripe or complain that like they love the bees but they hate the wasps why mm -hmm. do we have wasps mm -hmm. they should go die <laughs> i i don't disagree with them but i learned recently somewhere in one of those like little nature houses that they have at these campgrounds love those oh i love them so much yeah but that bees actually evolved from wasps so they have been around longer. So without them, we wouldn't have bees. Ha ha. All so, you wasp naysayers. As much as I hate the wasps, all right, I'll put up with you if it means I get to have bees. They just <laughs> tend to kind of be the assholes. Yeah. No. <laughs> all right. Uh, okay, so I want um, some of your apples because I just happened upon, as I was snuggling with the cat and browsing pinterest <laughs> i came across dolce de manzana which is a classic spanish apple paste Ooh. so this is a tapas item that you would serve according to this uh blog post at least um like a slice of cheese oh and yeah a slice of dolce de manzana you know me where i sit with like apple and cheese I know like those two we've things both, we've established that we love this combination, right? Yeah, this sounds already I'm I'm quite pumped. Yeah. So according to this article who um, written by um, a blogger in Spain, mm. the Dolce de Manzana or apple paste is from northern Spain, an area called Asturias, which is a place where a lot of apples grow. And they're known yeah. for cider. It's also known for strong and amazing blue cheeses. Um, oh. But she is, in this article, <laughs> she's pairing her Dolce de Manzana with a Manchego cheese, which I don't believe is a blue cheese, right? No, Manchego. I don't think oh. so. It doesn't, I don't think it's a blue cheese. But I think the idea is you could pair this with any kind of cheese uh, that you like. I think anything that's like, a nice slicing cheese that you like right sharp probably sh more sharp something with like a good strong flavor mm -hmm. yeah i can see the blue cheese or like a gorgonzola being uh mm. pretty darn good with that so i don't know if i've ever had manchego cheese i don't know i don't think i've ever had it unless i had it and didn't know i was eating it you know okay so what you're gonna do here is peel and core apples slice them into chunks that's kind of a funny way to cut them into chunks um drizzle them with lemon juice and then you're going to add apple cider so even more appley mm. and sugar 
and then it says to blend the mixture using a food processor or a blender until you get a smooth consistency. Transfer the apple puree to a heavy saucepan and heat on low and let it simmer for 35 to 40 minutes, uh, stirring frequently. So it will become um, a deep reddish golden color. To get to the point where it's more solid than a jam, um, but obviously not quite solid. Right. That I think is going to be the tricky part because <laughs> how will I, Heather Dyer at home in Canada, know <laughs> when it's the time to take it off? Hello, calling Spain. <laughs> <laughs> Hola. Oh. Yeah, so I'm going to do my best. I hope I'll get the right consistency. That's a tough thing to do because the consistency also changes quite a bit as it cools. Right. Uh -huh. mm. When it is ready, <laughs> when I determine it is ready, um, I will transfer the finished puree into a shallow container. I would say a loaf pan based on the pictures of this a uh, loaf pan and you and you want to put it into the loaf pan cover it and then it just says serve and, en and enjoy i think it must need to sit well cool at least right come down to a cheese temperature <laughs> you're, you're going to slice it so it's going to be like a loaf of apple jelly basically according to the Ooh. photos and you're going to slice it and put a slice of the apple paste as they call it on the slice of cheese and you have a nice little tapas so this sounds very open to interpretation i know <laughs> i'm uh thrilled yeah. to see what you discover as you go through this see and the other thing is this is i i had told myself when i was like looking at my pinterest thing i'm like i'm gonna do the achievable, like manageable, something, get some wins. Because I seem to always, I pick these things that you and I have no idea what to expect. And we've never eaten it. And we've never seen it. And we don't know what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> and aside from maybe a photo. And we don't know if we've done it right. And then something goes wrong. And we don't know how to what? suggest to do it differently. Because we don't know what we're doing with it. Which is all in fun. And hopefully listener loves to hear, you know, the fun experiments that we get up to here but i had thought maybe i should start the season with some good wins under my belt and i'm like nope that's not my style nah <laughs> why do that that's boring why do that when i can take on a complete mystery and just aim aim for what the photo looks like so the thing about it is it looks like it's not a cloudy looking thing it's very clear even though it's a uh, reddish, golden reddish kind of color. And uh, how do you get that by? Is there a step where you strain? No. And that's what I would think too. Like, I think I'm going to have to see what it looks like. And if I think it needs straining, because it looks as though it's strained. I I'm going to guess you might need to cross reference with some um, other. If there's other recipes. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. If you can find the Spanish website, like a Spain website that is in like Google how this is sometimes what I do is I Google recipes in another language and I spend a lot of time going forth translating mm, from one to the other. Point. But for the most part, you can kind of tease out the idea if you've got like a full and complete one in the language that you know, and then you can kind of bounce back and forth and be like oh this is about the same but they do this differently or they do this the same or this one's got different advice or it has a different description yeah perhaps in their native language yeah it could yeah. be that it's been simplified because it's an english i have a feeling recipe. this sounds pretty heavily translated just because we were kind of giggling about some of the words they were using already so Good point. See, this is why when I texted you, I'm like, I need your take on this. <laughs> this is why we do the first part of the episode Two brains. before we tried the recipes. <laughs> I need the input for sure. Oh, this sounds fun. Oh, this sounds also very good. It's kind of like a jam or like, you know, when you make like a pepper jelly or like a red pepper jelly or something yeah. like that, that you eat with cheese and crackers okay that's what this is like except that it's a slice and it's just apples apples and sugar 
basically. Hmm. I know. Very interesting. I'm going to take your very solid advice and look it up start playing around with language too heather <laughs> <laughs> maybe one of my children can help me to translate some well, spanish that's the helpful part of having our kids do this second language thing right yeah <laughs> expecting a baby or planning for one birthing magazine is here for you since 1997, Birthing Magazine has been Alberta's number one trusted source for current, relevant information on pregnancy, birth, and parenting alternatives. Published three times a year by Birth Unlimited, a local nonprofit, each issue is sharing inspiring birth stories, evidence based research, and community events. From midwifery care and home birth to full duration breastfeeding and attachment parenting and beyond. Birthing Magazine explores the options and alternatives that matter most to you. We believe empowered birth works not only for the child and the family, but also the world. Birthing Magazine, take charge of your birth experience. Dulce de manzana, everyone. Let's, mm. let's make some. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I want to hear all about this, Heather. This was really delightful. Okay, so. My iPad's giving me issues, but this is such a simple recipe that I could just tell you off the top of my head, I'm quite sure. Okay, so you're taking those apples, you're chopping them and coring them. So you don't want the core, but you can leave the peels because the peels have that pectin. Ah, yeah. You want to help this become a bit of a jelly, sort of. Okay. So you're just gonna put those into a pot with juice and zest of a lemon, and then cook it down until the apples are quite soft because you're going to get your immersion blender or put them into a blender or food processor and puree them. So they need to be soft enough to puree. I use my immersion blender and whizzed them up. There were a couple of um, pieces of peel mm. that didn't blend and I just sort of fished those out. Um, oh, okay. And it worked great. Then you're putting in sugar. Okay. And I will post the recipe with the measurements when I can mm -hmm. make it work. And remember we talked about in the first half, talked about cider. Mm -hmm. Well, I took, I took your advice on the recipe and I went and tracked down some Spanish recipes. Okay. And I found some YouTube videos. People are speaking Spanish. I couldn't understand them, but <laughs> I could watch what they were doing. And they all were using water. So I was like, okay, good enough. And really it was like a third of a cup or something. It so was I was like, I'm amount. not going to go track down mm -hmm. cider if I can just use water. And you're already putting so much sugar, I don't think you need the sweetness from cider. True. Right? True. And if you have a sweeter apple to start with, you're fine. So I just used water. So you're gonna put your sugar and your water and now you're cooking and cooking and stirring and stirring, low heat. Some recipes said up to 90 minutes. I think it depends on how big a batch you're doing. Okay. Just you're basically looking for the consistency. And I think that I cooked mine for about 30 minutes. Okay. So, I mean, there's a big difference between 30 and 90. So like there is watch it and maybe all that extra pectin in your peels too. That always brings things together fast. It probably depends on the type of apple, how much sugar mm -hmm. and, and the maybe. size of apple. Like if you think the oh, apples true. from you or the apples that I gave you are smaller Tiny. apples yeah. with more skin compared to how much flesh they have in them. Whereas if you have like some of those monstrous apples from the grocery store, you'd probably have a lot more moisture to Ooh, boil out. Good point, scientist. I love it. That's <laughs> what I'm here for. I know. I know. <laughs> and I'm not. So I appreciate it. Okay. So you're cooking, cooking, cooking. And I watched a couple of videos to kind of, I was really watching that consistency because that was where I was like, how will I know when to like take it off the heat? And it was to the point where they drug their spatula through and it stayed separate. It didn't come back together. Parted the apples. I have parted the ocean, <laughs> the, the sea of apples. The sea of apples. Um, <laughs> and, and then I was like, okay, I'm pretty sure Mm -hmm. that's good so I took it off the heat and then I put it into two little glass containers so I watched a lot of not a lot I watched a few videos to see what are they putting it into 
Yeah. Because we also talked about that, like, <laughs> what should I put it into? And it was like little Tupperwares and all kinds of random things and whatever you've got. So I thought, okay, I'm going to have these two little glass dishes. And I did a just very light vegetable oil. I basically sort of oiled it and then almost wiped it back out again with the paper towel, like just oh. really very light amount of oil inside. Mm -hmm. And then put the apple, it just, it to me, it looks like jam. Mm -hmm. Put it into them, covered it tightly with like plastic wrap and then lids, and then you leave it sit overnight and it should be good. It came out really nice onto a plate. So I decided to make like a little cheese plate with it oh, because it fun. is a tapas. You made the best little package of treats that arrived on my doorstep. A few things. So there was prosciutto in there. Yeah. There was two kinds of cheese. Mm -hmm. I had a an extra aged cheddar because okay. we had talked about that and we both really like mm -hmm. aged cheddar with apple. Mm -hmm. I also, mm -hmm. instead of manchego cheese, um, found what I googled and just, here I am in the deli. At the yeah, yeah, yeah. Store googling what's this cheese because it's a product of Spain and I was like oh what's this Spanish cheese I just came across and it said it is like a cheaper version of manchego so it's similar oh. but less expensive and I was like oh okay so most people maybe you can find it in your grocery mm -hmm. store it's an aged cheese firm ripened cheese it's called Iberico no Iberico sorry I had the what's the accent called accent <laughs> My little Spanish interpreter, I was asking my kids, okay, how would you pronounce this name, given where the accent is? Oh, I said that wrong completely now. It's oh. Iberico, Iberico, now I'm remembering. So anyways, I had it completely wrong. They were like, mom, the, the name for the accent is on the E. What are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Iberico cheese. Anyways, never mind. Pick the cheese you like. <laughs> Well, I liked that cheese, so... And I... it has a wax uh, covering kind of on it, so you don't want to eat the rind. It has this black, like, wax. Um, I didn't tell you that. <laughs> I ate the rind. Oh, well, I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> it wasn't that waxy. At first, I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm supposed to eat this. But then, like, it was just like the cheese to me. Maybe it wasn't wax, and I just assumed it was. Hmm. Mm. That's interesting. Well, anyways, it's a very mild flavor. It might just be an animal because it was all so good. <laughs> and then I thought we might want, because I saw people eating it with like a little cracker and a piece of cheese mm. and the and the manzana on top. Yeah. And I was like, maybe we want something to put it on. So you get baguette, mm. which for listeners, you would like to bake a baguette such as this. We have the recipe on our website it's nice. Erin's overnight baguette recipe well I don't know if it's your recipe but you had made it for the podcast when mm. you made liver pate Remember that's that? right yes I think I liked this better than the pate on there yes <laughs> I agree <laughs> uh, the pate okay. was like mm, but the bread is fantastic and easy man you're incredible you have not touched on the butters that you also oh, included in this Oh, there's also butter. Okay, there's so <laughs> also butter. Oh my god. Okay. You think just... it was like a month ago that I did this. It was like on the weekend. I'm just I had too many things going. Okay. You had so much in that little bag, so forgiven. <laughs> okay. So I was like, oh, mm, I think maybe some butter would be good. And you and I had talked about smoking, mm. possibly like smoking cheese, and I was like uh, when I tried both the cheeses, I was like, no, I like them just mm -hmm. as they are, even though I'm sure they'd be great smoked. I didn't want to smoke them. Yep. But I had a brainwave that I wanted to try smoking butter. So I put some butter in a little jar and I used the cocktail smoker mm -hmm. and I smoked it with apple wood chips. But of course, I'm not sure it was my favorite, but what did you think of smoked butter? By itself, I don't think I would put this butter on bread and eat it like that. Yeah. I, I would agree with you. It's, it's a little it wasn't harsh. my favorite like that. <laughs> yeah. But when you have the butter and the meat and the cheese and the manzana, oh yeah, all those things went together like it was a complete meal in one bite. 
Mm. Oh, I really, really, really liked all the flavors together. By itself, I, I don't think it's anything to recreate just for that. Yeah. But if you're going to have like a charcuterie board that has something different on it or something that accents or goes along with all these things, yes, do it. The other butter, I just mixed butter with pureed salt preserved lemons because you know I like those lemons. <sighs> yep. Again, there's an episode for that. <laughs> if you if you're new here, we love Been our salt preserved lemons. That. I think it was like episode two or three early, early in the podcast. I made those yeah. and we still make them all the time. We generally mm -hmm. have a jar in our fridge. I like to puree them and keep a jar of the puree in the freezer. This is what I just did for the first time. Oh, because I've always had the jar in my fridge and then we were away. The jar sat in my fridge for a really long time. And I was like, I feel like I'm hitting the end days on this. They get a little too soft. They get a bit too soft and mushy. Mm. And I was like, okay, Heather says you blend them up. So I blended the, like almost an entire jar of them. Mm -hmm. I have this huge <laughs> container of salted lemon paste now that sits in my freezer that is just like heaven on earth. It doesn't free, it doesn't solidify. It doesn't totally solidify. I keep scraping. I just oh. put my measurement spoon yep. in there scrape it out put the lid back in oh boy i know i have a little mason jar in my freezer and i just pull it out you mix it into uh -huh. salad dressing mix it into your roasted vegetables whatever soups everything whatever everything it's so good and so any I and that. every marinade now i'm gonna be mixing it with butter because that one was my favorite i liked the bread the mm. lemon butter yeah the cheese the prosciutto the Apple. It was so, oh. so good with all of that. Yum. This, I would say this dulce de manzana is a lot like if you want a quick kind of like overnight jelly mm -hmm. or jam, like say you're having people, you're having brunch or something yep. like the day before, you don't have to try to, it doesn't work really great to slice. You can slice it, but it's not like a perfect mm. slice. It's a bit soft. I would say so I but you could scoop that out and spread it on your bagels oh. or, your stones or like mm. this is so the bread was fantastic but the next day because I wasn't able to finish everything you gave me in one sitting because it was a huge amount of deliciousness <laughs> and you weren't sharing and I wasn't sharing no even <laughs> though my kids were like oh I'm having some of this no you're not the next day I sat down and I I brought everything out and I sat down at the table with it all <laughs> <laughs> but I had forgotten the bread because I had, I had had some bread the first day, but then the second day and I was like, yeah, I don't want to get up again. I think I'm good. <laughs> so I just sat there and made like little rolls with the prosciutto mm. and the cheese and the manzana and the butter. I just was sitting there just eating. Yum. If you want a nice uh, carb free snack. Yes, sorry. This was fantastic. I really liked it. And I went through half of that container just on my own, putting it on the cheese and all the things. So it's good. Pretty yummy. So good. It's just like a quick apple jam. And because you haven't strained it out and made the juice first, you're not getting jelly. Like it's not a clear no. jelly, which is kind of what I was thinking was going to be based on some pictures I'd seen. It's mm -hmm. not quite like that. It is like pureed apples yep that have formed like when it's called a paste that's more like what it is ah uh, that's a better word for it but it's, it's not, not paste quite not... like an apple butter because right i have had an apple butter before and it's and i've made it and it's thinner mm -hmm. and it also has like a lot of spices in it i kind of enjoyed that this was just apples mm -hmm. like apples right. and sugar there was no cinnamon there's no other spices going along for the ride because apple and cinnamon are almost always together. I liked that this was just apple. Yeah, so. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, you're right. Usually like an apple butter is more it's brownish in color because caramel it's got Yeah. This is just I love the color of this too in the end. Totally. I was surprised it... that it was as pinkish as it was because I gave you green apples. I know. <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> I, I think there were only two little ones that had red peel. Yeah. They all had green and yet it I know when I was cooking it I'm like what's going on here <laughs> it's all turning kind of pink 
I was like nervous at the outset. I'm like, why did I pick this recipe? This is good. Even once it was in the fridge for the night, I was like, <laughs> oh, why did I choose this? Like, it's going to be some thing that's like, oh, okay, Heather, whatever, like pick something good next time. But I was surprisingly impressed and I really enjoyed it. I don't think the love of charcuterie has left the food world yet. I mean, everyone's always doing a new type of board that they've got these selections on. And if you're hosting anything and you want to have those snacks out, I love when there's like a jelly with mm -hmm. those crackers and cheese. And this is like the perfect thing to put on there. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. really good. I'll definitely make it again. Yeah, I liked both those cheeses, mm -hmm. rind and all. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and now for the fine print. Links to recipes and other things we talked about in this episode can be found on the show notes or our website, www.3kitchenspodcast.com. Come say hello on Instagram, Facebook, Threads, YouTube, and TikTok. We'd love to connect. And if you enjoy the show, pass it on. Word of mouth is the number one way people learn about new podcasts. Thanks for listening. Oh, this, this is, is the edited this out is for part. your ears only. <laughs> <laughs>